Welcome to Scratch Coding. This is a series of videos to help you learn to code using Scratch. With Scratch, you can create your own stories, puzzles, and games, and whatever else you want to create. You're in control of everything in the programs that you write. Create a free account at scratch.mit.edu so you can do coding with us. Today, we're doing a simple version of Pong. It's like tennis or ping pong. Like and subscribe below because I have some power-up ideas and some tricks that I want to share. But today we're going to just keep it simple. We have a new project. First we have to make a backdrop. We're going to paint one. And I'm going to fill my background with blue. And then I want just a little bit of a different blue on each side. Not real noticeable, just a little different. And then I want a white line down the middle to just show where the halfway point is. And that's it for the background. Let's get rid of Scratch and get a couple paddles for our game. The paddle starts off turned 90 degrees. And we want it to point zero. How far left it is, is minus 229. That's X. I want Y to be 0, so it'll be right in the middle. If you don't like the green, it's easy to just come in here and change to whatever you want. And besides going to this starting position, really the only thing the paddle needs to do is go up and down. The paddle on the right is going to use the up and down arrows. The paddle on the left is going to use W and S. W to go up. So when W is pressed, we want to go up. It's not X change y by 10. We can copy that. And when s is pressed, we're going to change y by a negative 10 to make it go down. Works perfect. That's all the code we're going to need, so I'm going to duplicate that paddle. The first one I want to call it left paddle. And that one I want to call it right paddle. And right paddle, I want it to start off way over here. So instead of going to x negative 229, he'll be a positive 229. But he also needs to start in the middle at 0. When the up arrow is pressed, he'll go up. And when the down arrow is pressed, he'll go down. And then two people can play against each other. All we need now is a ball. And of course you can go in here and change the color if you want. We want to start all the code for the ball whenever the green flag is clicked. And the first thing we want it to do is start moving. forever. And
than if it hits an edge to bounce off. But instead of bouncing just straight back and forth, we want to change its direction a little bit. Let's go with 95. Also in the beginning, we want it to just start right in the middle. All right, so it bounces off the walls just fine now. Now we need it to bounce off the paddles. If it's touching the left paddle, then go back to the right. That's going to make it just go straight back. It's going to be kind of boring. You can play around with these numbers, but what I like to do is take whatever direction it's going now and add something to it. And then it's not random, but at least it's different every time. It's not the same thing every time. And then if it's touching the right paddle, then it's a little different than the left paddle. Now we need to add, if it's touching this blue line on the left, it gives a point to the player on the right. And if it's touching this blue line on the right, it gives a point to the player on the left. So we need a couple variables. left score and right score. This is his score and I can change it to a large readout to get rid of the word right score. I don't need that. And then we want to increase the score every time it touches that outside line. That means we missed it with the paddle. If it's touching this color over here, I'm going to increase right score. Get some of that color. And copy that would be the easiest thing. And then if it's touching this blue over here, we increase left score. Whenever we start the game, we need to zero out these variables too. So whenever the green flag is clicked, We'll set both of them to zero. It's looping through this so fast that it's touching the color a couple of times before the ball has a chance to turn around. So it's adding more than one point whenever the ball hits the wall. So if it's touching that color, I could either wait for a certain amount of time or I could wait until it's not touching the color before I let it add another point. So 
So if it's touching that color, then it's going to add a point and then wait until it's not touching the color before it moves on. Same with the other side. But you never want to have a wait inside your forever loop mixed in with other code that needs to be running all the time. So we've got to get another green flag and a forever loop. And then these things can wait and it won't affect my, our other forever loop. And that's all you need for a simple game of Pong. This free coding lesson was provided by STEM in Games. Watch more lessons and keep practicing so you can create new worlds and games and make your ideas come to life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.